Hello everyone. In this video, we're again continuing on with job costing, our topic of job costing. We're going to be specifically looking at examples here. We're going to look at a manufacturing company and follow from calculating a rate to calculate overhead all the way through applying that overhead into production for a manufacturing company. And we're also going to do it for a service company. So it looks a little bit different. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first example is specifically speaking to a manufacturing company. We'll see that in the wording of the, of the story too. Jerry James uses a predetermined manufacturing overhead rate to allocate overhead to individual jobs based on machine hours required. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start out knowing we're going to have to pick out these key words. So it says here in this first sentence that our overhead is allocated based on machine hours. Okay, so we already know our allocation base and our cost driver. At the beginning of the year, the company expected, which is the same thing as estimated, to incur the following. At the end of the year, the company had actually incurred, so this is what actually happened. The first thing we want to do is to compute our overhead rate. So remember that we take estimated overhead divided by estimated allocation base. So our estimated numbers are up here. So we're going to take our estimated overhead of $600,000 and divide that by our estimated allocation base. Again, it says our allocation base is machine hours. So we want our estimated machine hours, which is $60,000, or I'm sorry, 60,000 machine hours. So our rate then is $10 per machine hour. And I would go ahead and ask that when you're calculating these rates, go ahead and write everything out. Don't just write $10. If you write out $10 per machine hour, you already know exactly what you need to multiply your rate by. You know that you're going to multiply $10 times machine hours to get your allocated overhead. So it makes it a little simpler as we move on. The next step is to record our journal entry for allocating overhead. So again, if we think back to that map, of all those costs flowing through those 6T accounts that we introduced in an earlier video, we know that when we allocate overhead, we are debiting work in process and we credit overhead. So now we just have to figure out what amount we're doing that. So let's see, we have our rate is $10 and we know we multiply the rate times what actually happened with the allocation base and down here I've included the actual stuff. Machine hours was our cost driver. So if we multiply that times what actually happened with machine hours, we get overhead allocated or applied of $550,000. So now we can simply put that into our journal entry. $550,000 is debited to work in process and credited to overhead. The next step is we want to draw our overhead T account and we want to figure out if we're under or over applied. So we just applied, we know that applied is on the right hand side. This is what's getting credited. We can see that right here. We're crediting overhead for the $550,000 that we calculated. And then the actual overhead is on the debit side. So we've got to figure out of this actual stuff over here, what is overhead? Well, depreciation on property, plant, and equipment, that's overhead. Property taxes on the plant, that's overhead. Sales salaries and delivery driver's wages, those are period costs. Those are selling costs. So those are going to be in, uh, expensed when incurred. The plant janitor's wages, that is overhead. So now let's find a balance here. So doing the math here, it looks like we're going to end up with another credit balance here. So we've applied too much into process. So our cost of goods sold is currently too high. So when we fix this problem, we should be decreasing our cost of goods sold. So that's what this last problem is wanting us to do, to close that, abalance, that balance that we have in overhead to cost of goods sold. So if I have a credit balance in overhead, I'm going to have to debit my overhead account to get rid of that credit balance. So now I have a balance of zero, and that's what we want. If I debit something, which I debited overhead for 40000 right here. If I debit something, I have to credit something, and I'm going to credit cost of goods sold 
for that $40,000. There will be credit cost of goods sold, which is an expense account that decreases it. So that is exactly what we thought it would do. In this example, you're going to see that it's not a manufacturing company. This is actually a service company. So Ruth Realtors, a real estate consulting firm, specializes in advising companies on potential new plant sites. The company uses a job costing system with a predetermined indirect cost allocation rate computed as a percentage of direct labor cost. Okay, so there's our allocation base. It's direct labor cost this time. So we're going to end up with a percentage as our rate. At the beginning of the year, managing partner Tom Ruth prepared the following budget for the year. All right, so we're given our direct labor hours, direct labor cost, office rent, support staff hours, and utilities. Bleaks Manufacturing Inc. is inviting several consultants to bid for work. Tom Ruth estimates that this job will require about 220 direct labor hours. So the first thing we want to do is compute our hourly direct labor cost rate. Well, we have two things that are associated with direct labor. We have direct labor cost and direct labor hours. So to get a rate, we would divide cost by hours. So we have $2,550,000 divided by 17,000 direct labor hours. And that would give us a rate of $150 per direct labor hour. Okay, so that's our direct labor cost rate. And now we want to compute our indirect cost allocation rate. This is the same thing as your overhead rate that we've been talking about because overhead is your indirect cost. All right, so now we have to look at these other few things here in our list, and we have to determine what makes up overhead. Well, office rent, when we're talking about a manufacturing company, that really didn't constitute overhead because if we think of an office, that's usually the admin building, which has nothing to do with the factory. However, this is a service company. So where does a real estate company produce their, quote, product, if you will? They produce their product in the office. So anything to do with the office for a service company would be considered part of their overhead. So office rent, the support staff, which is in the office, would also be overhead, as well as utilities, we're assuming those are on the office, would also be overhead. So all three of those things would make up overhead. So we have $300,000 plus $900,000 plus $330,000. And to get the rate, we're going to make this a percentage of direct labor cost. So we're going to divide all of our overhead cost by our direct labor cost, which are $2,550,000. Okay, That's going to give us a percentage. And that gives us 0.6 or 60% as our overhead rate. In the next step, we're asked to compute the predicted cost of the bleach manufacturing job. Now, for a manufacturing company, recall that the cost of a job was made up of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. However, this being a service company where they don't actually provide a product, they provide a service, there aren't any materials. And we can look back in the problem and see that they don't give us anything as far as materials go. So we can start by calculating the direct labor cost. So if we look... If we think back to the problem, they told us that, that they anticipate that this job is going to take 220 direct labor hours. And our direct labor rate was $150 per direct labor hour, which gives us $33,000 in direct labor cost. Now we can compute our overhead. Because remember, overhead we calculated to be 60% of direct labor cost. And direct labor cost for this job is 33000 So when we do that simple math, we get overhead allocated to this job of $19,800. So the total cost of this job is $52,800. Total estimated or predicted cost of this job. Now the last part... If Ruth wants to earn a profit that equals 50% of the job's cost, 
how much should he bid for the police manufacturing job? So this becomes very important when we're out in the real world and we want to bid on jobs. How do we go about doing that if we want to make a certain profit? There's actually a couple ways you could do this. So we actually want it to be 150% of the cost. Okay, so we want to be, it wants to be a profit of 50% of cost, but we have to meet cost first and then be an additional 50%. So if costs are $52,800, if we multiply that times 1.5, that's 100% of the cost, so we're meeting the cost, plus we're adding an additional 50% of cost onto that. So that gives us $79,000. $200 is what we would need to bid on that job. Now, there's an additional way we could do this, a little bit longer handed, but if we take 52,800 and multiply it times 50% or 0.5, that gives us $26,400. Okay, so that's the profit that we really wanna make. But that's not what the question asks for. This just answers this part. The question wants to know how much should we bid for the job. If we only bid $26,400, we're not even going to cover our cost of $52,800. So what we have to do is add back the cost, $52,800, and that should give us the $79,200 that we found right here.